In April 2017, eight radio telescopes across the world focused on an area at the center of a galaxy 55 million light years away. More than 300 scientists, experts in electronics, engineering, software, as well as astrophysics, from 66 affiliated institutes had been working on the project for six years. Yet they were not certain if they could get a result. In 1915, Albert Einstein published his paper on general relativity. It included several field equations. They explain mathematically how mass distorts space and time. One implication was the ability of gravity to bend light. For centuries, astronomers had realized that Newtonian physics could not account for discrepancies such as the precession of Mercury's orbit around the Sun. The field equations revealed why, and astronomers became very interested. Soon, physicist Carl Schwarzschild discovered that, among other things, the field equations predicted a singularity, a body so dense that nothing, not even light, could escape it. The idea of observing celestial bodies that gave off no light, indeed absorb it, was beyond the technology of the day. And while Einstein accepted the mathematics, he regarded the prediction as an anomaly. For decades, theoretical physicists continued to explore the mathematics, trying to predict how a singularity might form from a collapsing star. But the orthodoxy, including Einstein, resisted the idea. With the advent of radio astronomy, it became clear there was a huge amount of activity not observable in the visible spectrum. Powerful radio signals traveling immense distances baffled researchers. Quasars and pulsars were identified, and the evidence suggested they were relatively small but incredibly dense objects. Astrophysicists began looking afresh at the idea of the singularity. In the 1960s, a new term emerged, black hole. New discoveries about supernovae, collapsing giant stars and pulsars provided a mechanism for the evolution of a singularity. Black holes were no longer regarded as an anomaly within Einstein's equations, and a new generation of astronomers with new tools began looking for evidence. The true nature of quasars emerged as active galactic nuclei. These objects, at the heart of some large galaxies, release huge amounts of electromagnetic radiation. It was realized that matter near a very large black hole was spiraling around the singularity at extreme speeds. This is an accretion disk, generating vast energy. Some accretion disks feature jets generated by the spin of the singularity and the highly magnetized material within the disk. It is important to understand the scale in this animation. The black hole at the center of the accretion disk is roughly the diameter of our solar system. The idea that every large galaxy had a supermassive black hole at its center gained credence as more quasars were examined. At the heart of our own galaxy, the Milky Way, no active accretion disk could be detected, but astronomers still suspected there was a large black hole. 
1992, a German team from the Max Planck Institute began a long-term study of stars at the center of our galaxy. Initially, they used the European Southern Observatory's new technology telescope. In more recent years, their observations were made using ESO's Very Large Telescope, or VLT. The team had to work at the infrared end of the spectrum, because the shorter wavelengths in the visible spectrum tend to be absorbed by interstellar gas and dust. The team is led by Professor Reinhard Genzel. Well, you see, the Milky Way Center is one of the most important laboratories we have to study in very great detail what's happening in centers of galaxies, in much more detail than we can ever hope to do in, in all other galaxies. Yet, here we are, we can study whether there's a central black hole, what happens around it, and so forth. All very general issues which you would like to explore and which you cannot really uh, study that much in detail in other galactic nuclei. During 50 nights over a 16-year period, the team recorded the movement of 28 stars in the central region of the Milky Way. They were clearly orbiting something that could not be seen. The circle representing the black hole is 60 million kilometers across, similar to Mercury's orbit around the Sun, and the body's mass is equivalent to 4 million solar masses. As they mapped the paths of the stars orbiting the black hole, the team were surprised by the highly elliptical track of the star they called S2. And then in 2002, nature gave us just an absolutely miraculous star which moved so close to this object that you could see it zip around the, uh, the mass uh, in a matter of only a few years and that gave us absolutely fantastic information. We could estimate the orbital parameters, the mass, etc. and we were fairly sure it's a, it's a massive black hole. Now the orbital period of this star is 16 years and these measurements we took here on the the then new uh, very large telescope we took in 2002. Take 16 plus 2002 and that's 2018. So our star is coming back to its original very close position uh, near the black hole. That's the time when we want to be there. Using ESO's very large telescope, the team monitored the close approach of S2 to the black hole at the center of our galaxy to test whether Einstein's physics would break down under extreme conditions. 